Last night in the state of Florida, it was nothing short of biblical, total, complete nuclear annihilation for what was left of the Democrat Party. For all real intents and purposes, right now in the state of Florida, it is one party rule. Now, I'm sure many people are a little disappointed at things that are happening at the national level, but here in this state, it's over. And it's over for generations. There's no coming back from this. And before we get into this, I always want to say thank you. Of course, be diligent. Another day above ground and breathing. Thank you, God Almighty. It is not exactly a sunshiny beach day here on the east coast of Florida. We have a storm coming in. The winds have been gusting. It is 67 degrees right now, 9 November 2022. It is 1449 hours. That is, of course, 249 p.m. for those of you in the civilian world. The precipitation has started to pick up, and by this time tomorrow, we're looking at possibly a hurricane making landfall. Now, those of you also who have joined us over at Patreon, I want to say thank you to you as well. Stepping up with the $1 per month makes a huge difference. A lot of people think, you know, one vote, what does one vote matter? What does one dollar matter? When enough people get sick enough to death of something, it can make a huge difference. Like the censorship here online, that $1 over at Patreon makes all the difference in the world. Just like what happened in the state of Florida. An absolute, complete bloodbath. Over 20 points. That's what people can do when they're sick of what's going on and they have finally had enough. What many people did not see last night, though, was what happened with the Florida legislature. People were watching Washington, D.C. and the National Senate and the National House. Well, we have every state has their own Senate and their own House of Representatives. A huge shift happened, a massive shift. We had a 78-42 advantage, conservatives over liberals, before last night, which was almost a two-thirds majority, only two seats short of that. Well, after last night, we have an 85-35 advantage. We are five seats over a two-thirds majority. Meaning, for all real intents and purposes right now, no Democrat can talk about anything Democrats want to talk about without being shut down. With a two-thirds majority plus five, all discussion will now be about conservative values and the conservative agenda. They will be just along for the ride to watch. In the Senate... We did have a 24 to 16 advantage. It has now been extended to 28 to 12. On top of what's happened in the governor's office and the ruling council, Nikki Freed is no more. Wilton Simpson took her place. So now it is conservatives across the board on the ruling council. It will be Governor DeSantis as governor, of course. Ashley Moody as Attorney General, pardon me there for a minute, Jimmy Patronis as Chief Financial Officer, another great conservative, and then Wilton Simpson as Agriculture Commissioner taking over for the lone Democrat that was elected, Nikki Freed. She is no more. But this is the real picture right here. This is the results of the governor's race. Only four counties in the entire state, Orlando, Gainesville, and Tallahassee. That's it. That is all Charlie Chris could muster. Miami-Dade flipped. West Palm Beach, even, I believe, I don't know if this is Brower down here, They even this hasn't been decided yet. Biden beat Trump down here by 15 points. And the governor won this by like 10. It wasn't even close. This is going to be the key for Floridians going forward, setting the stage for a new national standard of what conservatism is last night. Brett Baer, a liberal, a closet liberal on Fox News, I know a lot of you people think that he's a conservative because he's on Fox. Brett Baer is a uh, liberal, and he said, well, Florida's looking a lot more like Arkansas right now. I'm like, isn't Arkansas where Clinton came from? I think we're actually far to the right of Arkansas. 
Republicans extend their domination of the Florida legislature, claiming supermajorities in both the State House and Senate. And on top of that, our Supreme Court is nothing but conservatives. There's absolutely nothing that can be done now. Moody, Simpson, Petronas, as we covered, Republicans sweep in. And the seat that Charlie Crist vacated to run against DeSantis has now been claimed by a Hispanic woman named Luna, another conservative. So they lost that. Laurel M. Lee, our Secretary of State, another conservative powerhouse, took her new seat in Florida. So I ask again, I know a lot of you are like, didn't you say that you didn't like to I like to say I didn't like this decision he made going hat in hand and getting on stage with the demon Dave Rubin, the faker, the Johnny come lately. See, it wasn't the gay community that delivered this for DeSantis last night. They had nothing to do with it. In fact, Orlando, the home of the gay community in Florida, for those of you that don't know, voted against him. One of the few places. So it this didn't do him any good. But believe me, now that it's been established that Florida is the new home of, conserv- of conservatism and he is the new leader, de facto leader, of the conservative, if not the Republican Party, things are going to begin to change swiftly. Nobody predicted 20 points. People thought, well, if the governor does well, maybe he wins by 10, 12, 20 points and flipping Miami-Dade. If you see a Hispanic in Florida, shake their hand, buy them lunch, buy them dinner, get them a tank of gas, maybe a bag of groceries. Not that they need it, but they deserve it because this is exactly what I have been saying on this channel for years. The Hispanic community at their heart are not democrat progressives they are conservatives god family country in that order all of this no confusion there's no confusion in the hispanic community who hispanic women are and who hispanic men are there's no discussion about it I don't care whether the, what they're registered as to vote. When you start telling them what they can or can't do with their kids, or what they can and can't believe, or what, I, uh-uh, sorry. Last night was a referendum on the conservative Hispanic community in Florida. It is, and that's why I started off with the kaboom. Because that was what the whole agenda was. Let's, let's import a bunch of people from south of the border and we'll convince them to vote Democrat. Never happened. They were, at one time, possibly inclined to vote for Democrats that were conservative Democrats, workers' rights Democrats. But the current crop in charge right now and the doddering old fool in, the, in D.C., no, nah, they're not going to have anything to do with that whatsoever but as i mentioned we have a storm coming in and it looks like this one's going to be a little bit more of an issue at least for where i'm at than ian was this storm is headed and this is of course tracking the tropics.com this is the tracking nicole page we've talked about this website before the best resource for all images and information regarding storms on the internet Skip the news sites. Track the tropics, just like it sounds, dot com. Track the tropics, T-R-A-C-K-T-H-E-T-R-O-P-I-C-S. Track the tropics, dot com. This storm is headed for an incredibly heavily populated area. It is right now taking dead aim, and I showed this before, for Mar-a-Lago. Some have said, well, it looks like it might be going north of Mar-a-Lago. I'm going to stick with it's aimed right at it still. It looks like it might be coming through here and it's going to come up this way instead of directly at it and make landfall just real quick. Let's show where Mar-a-Lago is real quick. Once again, as I explained yesterday, just find the southern uh, tip of Lake Okeechobee right here 
and draw a straight line. Start with Bell Glade, and you'll start to see a, a road right here. And just follow that road right in. And this is where Mar-a-Lago is. Bingham Island, Audubon Preserve, Palmsicle Island. So we'll keep the cursor on it. And it's just, uh, just south of the dot that they use to say this is West Palm Beach. Just south of that. So this looks like it's coming right at it. It absolutely looks like it's coming directly at it. Let's see if we can... Here's where it is. Um, let's get something with a little bit of motion to it. It's heading right for it. I mean, this looks like the eye wall could literally go right over Donald Trump's bedroom. No lie. And the, the cloud field for this thing is huge. For this not even being a Category 1 yet, for the, they're not even technically calling this a hurricane yet. Look at the size of the cloud field. It's absolutely, this is going to be a bigger storm than I think a lot of people, you know, I think they're, they're looking at it comparatively with the numbers with, with Ian, you know, being Category 5-ish for, you know, and where it hit. Where it hit was very sparsely populated. Down here, Fort Myers, this region, compared to over here, not even close. There's 20 times as many people. Easy. Where this is going to hit than where Ian hit. So even if it's only a Cat 1 or Cat 2, it could do just as much, if not more, damage just because of where it's going to hit. And if it slows down at all, like we've seen in this region before, I think, was it Dorian that did that, that stopped and parked? right off the Bahamas here. And it comes in if it makes cat if it makes cat 2 and hit hits a direct directly on West Palm. That's going to be that's going to be something to pay attention to. At least as much at least as much as Ian. I haven't seen near the coverage more than likely because of the elections of course. But if this thing guns up and like I said look at the size of the the cloud field. I mean, we're getting winds Way up here, I'm way up here north of uh, Cape Canaveral, north of Daytona, and we're getting really good wind gusts. Let's see, maximum maximum daily gust 21.7. I'm looking at my readout. So it, you know, that's that's not huge, but for given how far away we are, we're solid 300 miles away from this, and it's already way up here, 20 mile an hour gusts. It's going to be something bigger than I think perhaps uh, those who've been talking about it have uh, wondered. So anyway, I will leave it there and, of course, take precautions. This uh, is showing, of course, a northward turn. Um, I don't think that necessarily matters that much. I guess it would in the sense that down here, South Miami, there's a lot more people. So, But even, even where it's turning toward Jupiter... And this region, Cocoa, Melbourne, um, way more heavily populated than southwest Florida was, Fort Myers and Cape Coral. This is a, a lot wealthier area down in the southwest, but um, this is some primo property down here, southwest Florida, primarily because it never sees hurricanes, ironically. But we will leave that there. So here's the, uh, the spaghetti model. Let me see if I can zoom this in. It does. It literally does. If you look at the spaghetti models, like I said, the southern line of the southern shore of Lake Okeechobee, straight across is Mar-a-Lago, and it's almost right on top of it. So I will leave it there. But as far as Florida concern, is concerned, a Democrat might as well be the party of the flying spaghetti monster at this point for, the, for all in real intents and purposes, for all the influence they will have now. They might as well be, I don't know why they're even going to show up, to be truthful. So, anyway, God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.